All right, welcome to Discovery Church. Let me look at this camera and welcome everybody. Join us online or those out in our courtyard right outside. What do you say, church? Will you welcome everybody to Discovery? Come on, make some noise if you're excited to be here. Yeah. Man, I'm pumped. We got this uh, new series we're starting today. Somebody say honor. Okay, it's going to be a short teaching series, uh, but it's such an important um, uh, virtue that is missing in our culture today. Widely overlooked is this, this, this virtue of the kingdom called honor. A lot of people believe, and I, I agree, that we're living in the most critical, like when I say critical, I mean criticizing, offended time of our nation. Like in all history, probably not even our nation, our world, is, it's just people are so quick to judge, so quick to to be negative, so quick to criticize and cut people down, so quick to be offended, so quick to cancel people, like more than ever before. And, it, and that was always a part of, I guess, society and culture and relationships. It's, it was always there, but it used to be just for like, I don't know, politicians or something like. Now it's like, it's in our family, it's in our church, it's in our relationships. And it's like, because you didn't like my post, I'm done with you kind of thing. It's just everywhere, every, like it's in the water now. This, this, this is missing in our, in our culture. Honor, and I want to be very clear, look, if you're a child of God, God has called us to live a different way. Like we should be, like, like we should not be so quick to judge. We should not be a part of our nature, a part of our culture, quick to criticize and judge and, and, and be offended. Here's why this virtue is so important, you guys. It can change your life. Write this down somewhere. Honor is the currency of heaven. Oh my goodness. Honor is the currency. Remember in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says that we have been given access in Christ to every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms. So God has, has rewards and blessings and provisions, available resources in the kingdom of heaven, in heavenly realms. It's made accessible to us, but the only way you can get it is with the right currency. You think about it, like as you're reading the word of God, you're reading, you're like, wow, you see promises, you see God's blessing, you see provision, or even imagine yourself getting caught up into the third heaven. Imagine yourself, you got, you're in the grocery store of heaven, and you're looking out, man, all the promises of God, the provision of God, the gifting of God, all the blessings and rewards. You're like, I want some of that, and you reach in your pockets, and you don't got the currency. You don't, oh, wait a second, I was a good person. I gave, I served, I did this, I did that. You didn't make the currency exchange when you passed customs, bro. Honor is the currency of heaven. It is the only, it is the only way that we can access every spiritual blessing that has been made available to us in Christ. I'm telling you, these next couple of weeks can change your life. It can change your marriage. This is a very much a, a kind of a follow-up to this Red Flags relationship series that what's missing in a lot of our relationships in every phase and every stage of those relationships is honor. Honor is the currency of heaven. Let me start here. Romans 12, verse, verse 10. It says honor. Someone say honor again. Honor one another, he says, above yourselves. This is the standard of the kingdom of God. This is the ethic of a disciple, that we are called to be people of honor, that we are called to honor other people more than above ourselves. We're to esteem them higher than we esteem ourselves. Today's message, the title of today's message is actually a question. Where is the honor? This comes directly out of an Old Testament scripture we're going to read today where God's asking this question, and we're going to ask it today and answer it. Where is the honor? Where did it go? What happened? Today, we're going to learn the importance of honor and why we should honor, why you should actually make this and like restore the honor back into your relationships, back into your life, why that's so important. Next week, we're going to talk about like who, we're going to go deeper. Who gets honor? Who's, who does God say gets honor? And then how? How does that, what does that look like? So we're going to dig a little bit, a little bit deeper. Let me start here in Malachi chapter one in the Old Testament. This is a prophetic book of the Old Testament, meaning this was God's you know, mouthpiece, a prophet of God speaking to the nation of Israel who had 
turn their back on God. And he's trying to give them admonition to get back on track. And so God is speaking to the prophet Malachi, and he says this, a son honors his father and a slave his master. But if I'm a father, say it out loud, these four words, one, two, three, where is God's like, where, what? If I am your father, then where is, you're honoring something, you're honoring things in your life, you're giving honor to some things, but God is going, where is the honor due me? If I'm a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord Almighty? It is you, priests. Now in the Old Testament, the priests were charged with keeping the temple, the word, and the presence of God. But in the New Testament, God says that we are all priests. That those who are in Christ are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. That we are called to be keepers of the presence. That we are called to be people of honor. So when you see priests, guess who he's talking to? He's talking to us, every follower of Christ. It is you priests who are showing contempt for my name. And they go, well, what do you mean? How have we done that? I love you, God. I'm all for you. I'm at church. What do you mean? So how, we're gonna, how does that happen? We're going to talk about that. Because I think we need to go back old school a little bit. How many of you were raised in a time where honor was like, where, honor, where you honored your parents? Anyone in here where you used to honor your parents? Okay. Who thinks we need to bring that back? Amen. I'm going to help you parents out, okay, in this series. We need, to, we need to bring some honor back to these relationships that God says deserve honor. I think that, that it's time for men to start to respect and honor women again. So like open up the door again. Okay. And, and before, like some people say when I talk about like honor and chivalry and stuff like that, some guys are like, they don't want that though, you know what I mean? No, no, you're crazy, dude, listen. Look, look they, might, they might have adjusted to a way of life because of your lack and our lack as men and men in our culture, they have, women have adjusted, but I promise you, you, you give her honor and watch her light up, okay? Let me say it this way, if you want her respect, then you better give her honor, Honor her. I think it's like, like to bring back honor to authority, which, which in our culture devalues and degrades. Honor to government officials where you voted for him or not. Honor for the flag. You know what? Okay, so, okay, I'm not, getting all, I'm not getting political. This is not political message or political statement. I'm talking about we as children of God should be the ones who exemplify honor in all we do in every relationship. We should be men and women of honor. And when we dishonor people, dishonor things, and we devalue them, you are not acting as a kingdom citizen. Okay? So I think it's just time, man. We, we understand honor and the importance of how important Honor is, Malachi continues, in Malachi chapter 2, he continues this admonition. He says, and now this admonition is for you, O priest. Someone say, that's me. That's me. I'm a priest. That's the admonition is for you. If you don't listen, and if you do not set your heart, and that's really key. We'll talk about that because we don't want to do anything out of duty, out of like obligation. No, it's out of the over, honor comes from the overflow of your heart. It is, he says, and if you do not set your heart to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse upon you. And I think to some degree there is a curse upon us because we have chosen dishonor. There's a curse on our nation because as a people we've chosen dishonor. And I will curse your blessings, meaning the very things that God wants you to be blessed by, you're not going to be able to access the blessing because you don't have the right currency. Like it's there, the provision's there, the blessing's there, the rewards are they're right there, but you can't grab it because you don't have the right curse. In fact, that the blessing is even a curse to you because you can't get it. You can't exchange for it. Yes, I have already cursed them. Because you have not set your heart, God says to honor me. Okay, so when, when doing like a, a Bible study like this, and what we're doing here, we're studying this, a particular word, a concept of theology called honor. It's really important when you're doing deep dives like this that you go back to the original language that the Bible was written in. And your Old Testament was written in Hebrew, New Testament was written in Greek, because you get a lot more understanding of these words and concepts when you go back to like those original language stuff. So I'm going to teach you a little bit of original language today, okay? So honor in, in Hebrew is the word kaveh. Say kaveh. Look at you scholars up in here. You're so smart, you guys. Okay, the Greek word is 
to me. Say, to me. Okay, that, now that's the one I want to I want to kind of sit on for a little bit and, and study because I'm gonna I'm gonna study some of the uh, Greek or New Testament passages with you. So honor in Greek is to me it means to value, to to bring worth, to ha- to bring weight. Like that's weighty. This thing is honorable. It has weight, substance to it, or to receive with appreciation. Th- like it has value. Think of those things like. You remember when you were, you were growing up and your mom, did your mom ever have like tableware that you couldn't touch? Like the china and the, or some, maybe they weren't china, fake china. She still put them away, you know what I mean? But they had in the cupboard and stuff. You couldn't, if she saw you eating spaghetti or Cheerios in that thing, man, you are in trouble, right? Because that would only come out for Thanksgiving or, or Christmas or something like that. Because there was value, there was worth, there was, there was weight to those things. Or maybe you have like special jewelry that go into the special box. Not all jewelry goes into that. You know what I mean? That cubic zirconia he bought you 10 years ago, you don't even know where that's at, right? No, 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 but the good stuff goes in that. It's, it's because there's weight to it. There's value to it. There's honor given to it, okay? Now, the opposite of honor, dishonor in, in Greek is atimos. It means to take lightly. So I remove weight. It has weight, but I'm gonna take it lightly uh, or to reject or disrespect, to treat as, look at this, ordinary. That which actually should be special, I treat as ordinary. So to honor something means to to esteem, to cherish, to value, to build up, to believe the best. And to dishonor means to like criticize, to belittle and devalue to where there's nothing special about it or about you. And I believe we're living in a generation where where things are, are taken lightly or weight is removed from things that God wanted weight on. He wanted value on, and we remove value from it. Let me, let me go to Mark chapter 6 and show you um, how important this honor principle is. Let me give you context of Mark chapter 6 real quick. Just leading up to this chapter, Jesus just performed two amazing miracles back to back, and you're probably familiar with them. The first miracle was the, the healing of the woman with the issue of blood. Been bleeding for 12 years, and, and this is the woman that came up in the crowd and touched the hem of his garment, and he says, there was power released from me, and he says, it was, it was by your faith you're healed, and it was just amazing impartation of not just theology, but a miracle that happened, that this is like faith, so this was an amazing miracle, and then he goes in, in to, this, to this house where a girl's dead, prays for her, and she comes back, she literally dead, comes back to life, you guys. This is two amazing miracles that people have just witnessed right after that. Now we get right after that, Mark chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Jesus left there from those miracle moments and went to his hometown. So not his birthplace, but the place he was raised. He was raised, okay? He went to his hometown accompanied by his disciples, where the Sabbath came and he began to teach in the synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him? that he even does miracles. But look what they said. Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't isn't that his profession? Isn't isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? And aren't his sisters here with us? So what did they do? They didn't keep him up here with his miracles and his, his, his Messiah that he's claiming to be. They lowered him to a carpenter, to Mary's son. They, they took his weight away. They took the honor away. And Jesus says this, and they took offense at him, it says. They took offense. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown, only in a place where where you're treated as common or ordinary, among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor. And then here's the kicker right here. Look what it says. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. In other cities, you saw miracles, signs, amazing, powerful, but it says he could not do, not he would not. When I first read this, I was like, I was taken back. Like, wait a second. This must be like an English misprint or something like that. Let me go look at this original language. What is it saying? And it in fact does say he could not, meaning this, this is what it means. Jesus is restrained that in other places he could do miracles but in here in his hometown he could it says just a few like he could only heal some migraines or something like that i don't know some headaches and 
That's all he could do. He could only do the, but he could not do many. So, so if we can understand, listen, if we can understand what restrained him, then maybe we can understand what's restraining us from receiving the blessings. We'll never be able to receive from someone we don't honor. See, I wonder what miracles God wanted to get to you. I wonder what, what like blessings he wanted to give you, what prayers God wanted to answer, but he didn't because you lacked honor. Y'all still with me, okay? See, what they should have received with weight, they treated as ordinary. And in this text, we can see two things that cause dishonor. Two things. Write them down. Number one is familiarity. Familiarity causes dishonor. In other words, anything that you're too close, close to, you can become, you have the danger of becoming accustomed to, getting used to, and treating as ordinary ordinary we see this in relationships often you can probably sympathize with this maybe when you were dating her you know she was the best thing ever you know you open up doors for her you to comment and brag on her you post about her and stuff best girlfriend ever hashtag true love you know and then eventually you guys get married and then after some time, the magic wears off a little bit. And you start to treat each other as ordinary, taking each other for granted. I've seen men who show, show more affection to their dog than their wives. And then he burps and scratches something, and he's like, you want some of this? And then wonders why she's not that into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want... You want a God-honoring marriage? Here's, here's the secret. Um, honor one another above yourself. You, 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 want, you want a common marriage? Treat each other as ordinary. Every time you do that, you lower it down, man. What was once special becomes common. But I want you to see something. At the root of this word familiarity, do you see the root of it? Family. Isn't that true? That the place that we are most at risk of dishonor is with family. Not just receiving it, but giving it. The most dishonorable things I could say and we can say are the people who are closest to us. We can hurt them the most, wound them the most in a place of family. Isn't that Mary's son? Isn't that, isn't that the brothers and the sisters? Isn't the place of family, husbands, wives, wives to husbands, children to parents? We, we can become so familiar with God. Some of you have been coming to church too long, and you got familiar with this thing. You're too familiar with his presence, too familiar with his word, too familiar with worship and his power. I'm telling you, if we're going to be a church that sees signs and miracles, then there cannot be familiarity in this place. And not only that, not only can there not be familiarity, but write this down, there cannot be offenses. Offense causes dishonor. It says they took offense at him. You see, anytime you're offended with someone, you can never receive good from that person. Never. You can never honor that which offends you. You think about it. So, like I see it even as a, as a pastor. Sometimes people get offended at me, not even a lot of times of what I did. Sometimes someone told them their experience of something that they had. Like, and so some offense gets inside of them, not because of anything I did, because someone said, and then they come into a church service like this, and they wonder why God isn't speaking to them. You know why? It ain't because the preaching ain't good. I'm doing all right. What changed? Your heart. What changed is, is, is how you see. Your offense is what changed. Offense caused dishonor, and you cannot receive anything from someone you don't honor. If you're offended by government, you literally treat it in a different place than God calls us to. See, I think we can be disagreeable without being disrespectful. Amen, you guys? If you're on a continuous search to be offended, you'll always find what you're looking for. And I think we live in a culture where they're, they're, we're almost looking to be offended. We're looking for it. And God has called us to live different. So how do we do this? You guys? How do we restore the honor back to our relationships, our homes, our, our, our lives, our relationship with God? I'm going to give you four, four truths, four things that we need to understand in order to restore the honor back into our lives, okay? Number one is this. We have to understand that honor begins with God's claim on them. That's where it begins. Not on what they did or what they said. Honor begins with God's claim on them. See, God has this unique ability to see our depravity 
at the same time as our dignity. And that's actually pretty good news because God knows you, he sees you, he knows it all, he knows what you did, he knows what you said, he sees your depravity, but he still sees you and loves you. He still sees you and sees your dignity. God has that ability to see and appreciate both. Romans 8 and 30 says this, and those he predestined, now some people get that wrong. Some people think pre, predestiny is like, well, God has a plan and he wrote some people out and you're predestined for this. And that's not what it means at all. It means predestiny, that God pre had a plan for you. He had a destiny for your life, just like you do for your kids. Like, like I saw my kids graduation college before they ever graduated college. I see my kids graduate. Before my kids have a healthy marriage and a healthy family, I see my kids having a healthy marriage and a healthy family. I see them being successful. I got a predestiny for my kids, and I speak it over their life. God has predestined you, and check this out. That's why he sees you as called, the scripture says. He sees you as justified. He sees you as glorified. I used to parent my kids different. I used to tell my kids what they did wrong and how to do it right. And then I figured out that, that my correction didn't help them do what was right. Go figure. Like, oh, man, I'm telling them. And so somewhere along the way, early in my parenting, I kind of changed how I parented. I, I tell them, okay, this is what you did, but that's not who you are. This is who you are. Okay, that's what you did, but that's not who you are. You are a child of God. You are a conqueror. You are a leader. You are a, a, a and, and so I would speak that life into them. It has nothing to do with what they deserve. Honor has nothing. It doesn't matter what, how they voted. They could be Republican or Democrat. That doesn't matter. It doesn't begin with that. It, it doesn't matter if you had a good dad or a good mom or a bad dad. It doesn't matter. Honor does not begin on what they did. It begins on what God says about them. His claim on them, that he created them, predestined them, died for them. That's why we honor. You got to get the right view of people. Anyone else have the hard time keeping the right view of people when you're driving? This is the place, let's get real, this is the place where you will do and say things that you would nowhere else do or say. You think things that are just different. You get behind that wheel and you be, it's just different, isn't it? I was stuck in traffic here recently, and this happens often, but I remember here recently, I'm trying to get in and it's all packed and, and they could just, they see me. I know they see me. They're not looking at me, though, huh? They don't look at you. Even the passenger, the driver, nobody's looking at you. They're just looking ahead like, I don't see you. Because if they see me, guess what? If I can lock eyes, if you see me, then you got to you gotta love me. I'm a person. I'm not just a vehicle. Now you got to, now you, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just trying to lock eyes. Like, come on, come on. And Because if I lock eyes with you, I can give them the. And, they're, and I'm telling you, every time they're just like. Because that, you know, that car length was really important, you know what I mean? That three seconds they lost was extremely valuable here. I was driving. Confession is good for the soul, but not good for the reputation. So here you go. I was driving. I thought to myself here, um, and don't crucify me. I thought to myself, what a jerk. You ever thought that, you know what I mean? I'm like, what a jerk. And then I heard God speak to me. He said, that's my jerk. See, if I see them based on my view of them, then I can treat them like a jerk. But if I change my perspective and I, and, and I see people based on God's claim for them, then I got to honor them. Honor begins with God's claim on them. Ephesians chapter 5 says, submit to one another. Now, that word submit, it's not like the duty, oh, because you have to. This is talking about honor, the delight. I, this is my, I, I want to honor you. Submit to one another. Why? How? Because they deserve it? No. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's why I honor you, because I honor him as I honor you. This is the honor principle. I cannot say I honor God and dishonor you. I'm not honoring God if I dishonor those who are created in his image. See, when you ascribe honor to someone, here's it, they often become more honorable. Honor elevates. Dishonor decimates. 
well, if I had a wife like you, you know, I would maybe I would. If I had a, a husband like your husband, then maybe he would. Da, da, da. Well, maybe she's got that kind of husband because 20 years she's been honoring him up to that level. And maybe you got the husband you got because for 20 years you've been tearing him down. Is that too hard? Are you all right? Okay. <laughs> Number two. Here's why, here's why, man. This is just like, gosh, we got we to gotta understand some things. We're going to restore the honor. Honor benefits me too. It benefits me. Now, I hesitated to actually even include this because I don't think it's a good practice for us to do the things that God wants us to do that are in his will to do for selfish reasons, like for the motive of, because I'm, I give, because I'm a give. Bless me, God. I'm a give, but you got to bless me. Multiply. Multiply to me or else I stop giving. That's not a good, that's not good, like God's not your Santa Claus, you're not your slot machine and stuff. So, but, but the only reason why I put it in here, and I'm going to teach it, is because God went out of his way to make sure he taught it to us, okay? So God multiple times goes out of his way to tell us that his will for our life is not for his benefit, but for your benefit. Like he wants, like his will is to benefit you, not for it to come, somehow benefit him, it says this in Mark chapter, or Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He, Jesus speaking, he says, he who receives you receives me. Now remember, what is honor? Honor is to, one of the definitions is to receive with appreciation. Now Jesus here is actually going to send out his disciples two by two. Remember that? Two by two into the towns. And he actually gave them authority to drive out demons and heal and do signs and miracles. But he tells them this, if you go to a town and they don't receive you there, Remember what he said? Dust off your sandals and go to the next town and take your blessing there. He's, Jesus was telling him, some people are not going to be able to receive the miracles that I'm giving you, the authority I'm giving you. They're going to limit you. Don't worry about it. Dust off your sandals and take the miracle to the next town. Okay, so this is what we're talking about in receiving me and receiving you. He's talking about honor here. You, I could even like Replace the word so that it means the same thing here. Look what it says. He who honors you honors me. And he who honors me honors him who sent me. Now, this next sentence is powerful. He says this. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Okay, let me explain this. I was taught this by... by a man named John Bevere, he's an author, former pastor. Years ago, I got ta I taught this, he, he taught me this principle. Um, he, was, he used to be a youth pastor uh, years ago. Now he's an author, speaker, travels. But he said he got this youth pastor role. The youth pastor that was in it before him, it was a great youth ministry, but he went on to like start a church. And so he got this role and it was a great ministry, he had a student leadership team. So you know, high schoolers that were part of his team. Well, one of those junior high school student leaders came up to John as this new youth pastor, and he says, hey, John, hey, John, the, the other pastor was my friend. He was my buddy. And I want to know right now, are you going to be my buddy? Are you going to be my friend? And so John tells him, he says, well, that's, that's dependent upon you, not me. He, and he tells him this principle of Matthew chapter 10. He says, Jesus says that those who receive a prophet in the name of the prophet receives a prophet's reward. So you will get from me what you, how you receive me. So he said, the question is this, do you want the reward of a buddy or do you want the reward of a youth pastor? Because how you receive me determines what blessing you're going to receive from my life. And then he encouraged him like this. He said, and by the way, I don't encourage you to treat me like your buddy because you got a lot of them. You got friends, and you got buddies, and you're getting the reward of those friendships, but you only have one youth pastor. How you receive, let me say it like this, the level of honor you give determines the level of blessing you receive. How you, you receive the prophet's reward. He has blessing for you, revelation for you. He has resource for you. God does, but you're not going to access it because you're not giving him the weight he deserves the value, the honor. Are you, are you all with me still, you guys? I see this sometimes even in my, like in my, as a pastor, as a lead pastor. I'm like, people want to connect with me, and I, I'll, I try to stay accessible, go out here, talk to people. I'll even get coffee with people, lunch with people. And, but I can't be, be 5,000 people's buddy. 
Do you know what I mean? Let me just be honest with you. That's why I got small group leaders and pastors and we're caring and equipping for God's people together because I can't. Every now and then, I feel like someone feels like they, they got to be my buddy in order to receive from me. And I'll tell them this principle. You don't, you don't want to receive me as a buddy. You don't want a buddy's reward. You want, you want a pastor's reward in your life because you, you only have one pastor, lead, one past shepherd over your life. Amen, somebody? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 6 says it like this. Because it benefits you. Here's, here's the principle. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Why? Because it'll bless them if you do it. Oh, yeah, it'll bless your dad if you treat him right. No, that's not what he says. Honor, is, it says this, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life. Like honor benefits you, not just the people you're giving it to. It's beneficial to you. Now, I don't, I'm not the type of person that needs a lot of like applause or attaboys or anything like that. I don't, I don't need it. But there are some places I go into, and I'll preach and I'll teach that are much different than others. In some places, they're just like, they don't know me. It's like, whatever. And just like, like pulling teeth, you know, ain't nothing. God's not moving much. And I feel like even restrained, like I'm trying to release blessing. But there are other places I can go into, like Teen Challenge. Every time I teach a Teen Challenge, man. I got a Teen Challenge. They come every 6.30 here, and they sit here in this section every 6.30 service, man. And I'll, I'll, I'll preach it down, teach them, and I'm like, this is the day the Lord has made. And they're like, oh, that was so good. Yes. Well, write that down. This is the day the Lord. Oh, so good, Pastor. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And I, blessing is being released, man. They are receiving a reward from the word. Why? Because they're honoring the word. They're honoring it. The more you value it, the more you get value from it. The more you honor, the more blessing you receive. Okay, how do we restore this honor? We got to understand this, you guys. We got to understand some things. Here's, here's a third one. Number three, honor is actually it's decided, not deserved. You decide honor, whether they, they, you think they deserve it or not. You see, respect is earned. Honor is deserved. Respect is earned. Yeah, you may not respect a person based on their beliefs or their, their, their ideas, or, but inherently, by design or by authority, they deserve honor. 1 Peter 2 says, submit. Now, again, that doesn't mean obey or agree. It means honor. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake, look what he says, to every authority instituted, not among God even, among men. Okay, so mind you, this Peter is writing this in a time where uh, the Roman emperor is Nero, who was killing Christians and people, crucifying them and boiling people, and, and he, he loved killing people and spilling blood so much, he made it a sport. And Peter's, Peter goes, even him, even this one who's, who's killing us, burning us, burning our literature, even him, whether the king or the supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong or to commend those who do right. For it is God's will. This is God's will for you to live this way, for you to be different, for you to be men and women of honor, that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk going on social media. It's there in the Greek somewhere, I'm telling you. It's like Twitter was right there. Live as free men, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Do not... Stand behind your facade of self-righteousness and God-fearing, you know, Bible-believing, and, and while you dishonor your government officials, because they are, and, and while you dishonor your spouse, because they are, and you hide behind self-righteousness. Don't use your freedom for evil. Live as servants of God. Show proper respect. Now, that word respect is translated in NIV here uh, as respect, but in the other translation, it's, the, the Greek word is, is to me. It's honor. He's saying show proper honor to everyone. Everyone gets this. No, no, no. It's not just those who are in authority. Everyone gets this. It doesn't matter what level. Of, every, everyone gets this. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God and honor the king. Why does God call us to do this? Can you imagine if we as followers of Jesus, if we, were, if we had a different culture, a different virtue, if we were actually men and women of honor, of how distinct that we would be, 
Can you imagine like how attractive that that would be contrary to the rest of this world? That's why God wants us to be men and women of honor. And I got a challenge for you. I'm going to give you like a one-week challenge, a seven-day challenge. Here, it, I gave you the verse, this verse at the beginning, but let me give it to you in a different translation. Here's the challenge. Romans 12, 10. Outdo one another in showing honor. Like, outdo it. I'm challenging you to outdo your spouse. Like, make it a game. Outdo each other. Like, try to, try to honor each other better and more. All right? Outdo each other. Like, like, when you go out to eat later, like maybe today, you're going out to eat with some buddies or something like that. Get the check. Outdo each other. And if they try to get it before you, run up to the front and be like, no, 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 no. Pay. I'm paying this thing, man. Here, don't use that card. Outdo each other in honor. When you go to work this week, outdo your coworkers and your supervisors and your managers outdo each other in honor. I challenge you for seven days, I'm telling you, you're going to see a currency exchange that the blessings and the rewards and the provisions that were inherent in the kingdom of heaven that you were supposed to get, you're going to see a currency exchange and you start accessing rewards. You're going to start accessing blessings that you didn't know were there, provision that you didn't know was there if you just honor. Try it. I dare you, seven days, outdo each other with honor. Get her, get her flowers, you know? Sometimes guys are like, they die though, you know what I mean? They're just like, what's the use? They die. That's the point, knucklehead. <laughs> right? Marriage is work. Love is work. You got to throw another log onto that fire or the fire dies off. Get her flowers, but they're going to die. That's the point. You got to keep giving her flowers. You got to keep working. You got to keep loving. You got to keep sowing. That's the point. I love you, man of God. I love you, okay? I didn't mean to hurt your pocketbook too much. Just try to... I'm trying to help you out. I really am. Outdo. Outdo her. Outdo her. And you'll, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll get something different from your marriage and from your relationship, if you, if, if you bring honor, it's that currency that you actually can receive from that relationship what was intended, what God intended you to receive. Okay, last one, number four. Honor is a heart posture. It's not just words. It's not like, okay, I got her flowers, fine. You know what I mean? Open the door, there you go. No, no. Can't open your own door, here you go, honey. <laughs> Didn't know you needed help with the door. No, it's not. It's a heart posture. True honor originates in the heart. It's out of an overflow of reverence for God, out of reverence for Him. Matthew 15, 8, Jesus says, Man, these people, they honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. And can we, just, can we just for a moment, before you, before you check out on me, I know I give you last scripture and stuff like that and last verse, but before you check out, can we just do a little heart checkup? I mean, it's really easy. Have we become too familiar with God's presence? Have we become too familiar with His Word? With even coming together with the, the, the saints of God, the collect? Have we become too familiar treating Him as ordinary? Are we removing some weight where we should be adding value, worth, and weight and honor? Do we give God good lip service? Do you like, because he's not, he's not the, you know, the big guy in the sky. Jesus is not your homeboy. I mean, Jesus good. He's my homeboy, man. He's not, he's not six pound, eight ounce baby Jesus. You know what I mean? He's not. He is the risen and soon returning king. He is the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the prince of peace, the alpha, the omega, the, the lion of Judah, the lamb of God. He is my redeemer, my savior, my Lord, my king. And when we honor God, and when we honor people, even though we disagree with them, we honor them because God's name is on them. His, his name is on them. That you are not ordinary. You are not ordinary. You have God's name on you, inscribed, predestined by God. Can we, can we just have a heart check? Do we need to restore some honor? Do we need to restore some of the honor back to maybe our relationships? Or maybe even our relationship with God? 
have we come to a place where we got too familiar? And we're treating him lightly, treating his presence or his word commonly, where he should have weight, value, and we should receive with anticipation, appreciation, honor. Can we come back to honor you guys? Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the Give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.